guys, today we're going to review the Israeli police M1 carbine. So this is a tacticalized version of the famed M1 carbine, which dates back to World War II, which was tacticalized during the 90s and, and early 2000s for use by the Israeli police civil guard unit. So first of all, what is the civil guard unit? So in Hebrew it's called Mishmar Ezrachi. So it's a unit of volunteers, civilians, who uh, take their time to go and patrol um, in all sorts of dangerous areas in Israel. And they've, they've managed to um, intercept and stop a lot of terror attacks. Um, I mean, and this is a unit which is going way back to the beginning of the state. And uh, so they were issued M1 carbines early on. You know, the U.S. Uh, shipped Israel a huge stockpile of, of you know, World War II vintage refurbished M1 carbines um, in the 1960s, about. And uh, they were used by the IDF, but then later on, a lot of them were put into service in the Israeli police uh, for use by the Civil Guard. And um, they chose that weapon because it is light, it is easy to use, um, it's accurate for the ranges that it's appropriate for, um, and it's just uh, it's a very simple weapon to maintain and to, to, to train civilians on. Um, and so they had a large stockpile of them, so they, they figured that was a good choice for this unit, and they armed them with that, and this is going back to at least the 1970s, um, but they were in their original configuration with the Woodstocks. Um, but then by the late 90s and early 2000s, that batch of, of old World War II era rifles that was still in, in service, in active duty service with the Israeli police, um, a lot of those wooden stocks were, were breaking, were cracking. I mean, don't forget, this is, you're talking 70 years here of, of intense uh, wear and tear. And they were not treated nicely. They were thrown around, they were knocked around, they were, you know, they were they're damaged in, in a variety of ways. And so, uh, the police was looking into ways to lengthen the life of those rifles because they are, after all, really great rifles and they were doing a, a great job in service in the Mishmar Zrachi, in the Civil Guard. And so there's a company, a uh, U.S. company, called uh, Choat. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Maybe they call it Choat, C-H-O-A-T-E, Machine and Tool, and um, Choat Tool Corp. And they make this really cool... Uh, really ergonomic stock. It's a folding stock um, which attaches to uh, a mil spec M1 carbine. So it's got a it's got a really solid folding stock over here. It's just a push button and uh, it opens up like this. And uh, what I really love about this is it's just so rugged. It, it doesn't wiggle. A lot of folding stocks wiggle. Uh, this one does not wobble at all. Uh, it's got a you know pistol grip, so it, it makes it more ergonomic. It's got a ventilated handguard which replaced the uh, original wood handguard that the uh, older M1 carbines had. Uh, and then of course this is all you know, polymer as opposed to wood which doesn't warp as much, which doesn't crack as much. Um, it is, um, it, it's a much more dense and much more rugged and more modern material to choose. Um, and so they, they took a lot of those M1 carbines and they got rid of the, uh, the older wooden stocks and they replaced them with this. And this is what they were issuing for many, many years to the Civil Guard volunteers and also to a lot of uh, patrol policemen, not just volunteers, actually, you know, duty cops. Um, and I actually remember this weapon very fondly because I was a volunteer uh, from 2000 to 2002. Now, this was during the beginning of the, the Second Intifada um, in Kiryat Arba, which is uh, a settlement right next to Hebron. Hebron. Um, and uh, so I was a 16 year old, I was a teenager, I was, you know, finishing high school and, you know, a lot of my peers were volunteering and I volunteered too. And um, so the police issued me this very weapon right here, M1 carbine with this uh, Choat machine and tool folding stock. Um, and, you know, we went out to, we, we, we trained on it, the police trained me on this. And then we went, then we, we, we shot it at the range several times, um, my unit of uh, civil guard volunteers. And I really loved it. It's it's just something which is so um, very light, very practical. You know, if you're in the vehicle, because you know we would do a lot of patrols in a vehicle, you just fold that stock, and it can just sit on your lap when you're in the vehicle. And when you come out, you just pop it right open, um, and you can patrol with it. And it's um, it's just really, really ergonomic, you know. Uh, and it it, it it takes down from the weight. This is lighter than the wooden stock, 
um, and it just really, uh, it's really well thought out. So I love this. You know, I patrolled with this, and there were actually some, some firefights that were going on at the time that I was involved in using this M1 carbine. Now, unfortunately, they only issued us uh, two magazines a piece of 15 round magazines. You know, the, the Israelis never used the 30 round magazines that, that were made uh, during the Korean War era uh, because they were just not reliable. They, um, they tended to jam. You could only load uh, about 28 rounds into them. And, uh, and even then they would jam a lot. So the Israelis chose not to use those and said sticking with the original um, 15 round box magazines, which were much more reliable. But of course, low capacity. So they would issue us those magazines and they had 15 rounds each. And very often, they wouldn't even be loaded to the, uh, to the top. Um, maybe some people were skimming off rounds. Who knows? But uh, we would always have usually less than 30 rounds on us. So that was not, um, that was not a, a great feeling of confidence. I would have loved to have more ammo. Uh, if they could have issued us like a duty vest. We had a duty vest, and it had two pockets on it for these magazines. Um, I would have appreciated a lot more than that, considering that this was, at the time, uh, this was a combat zone. You know, we were, we were patrolling the border of the settlement, the, the gate of the settlement with Hebron. A lot of Palestinian terrorists were trying to infiltrate at the time. I remember we arrested, uh, there was a, a van, uh, and they had, there was a terrorist that was, that was hiding under the back seat, and he had a knife, and he was was trying to carry out a terror attack and we stopped him we, we searched the, the van and we arrested him and I was I was armed with this um, and it would have been nice to have more ammo so I can, I can tell you that but I, I definitely felt very confident with this rifle I never felt that I was lacking even though this was already by that time and you know we're talking 2000 2001 2002 this was already considered an antiquated weapon I mean the the M1 carbine had you know seen its its prime in World War II and, and Korea um, and then by the time of Vietnam, it was already being phased out in U.S. service already. Um, but the Israelis were still using this in the early 2000s. And um, alongside, of course, much more modern weapons such as the, the Galil, the M16, and, and even the M4. Because the M4 entered Israeli service in uh, around 2000. Um, but... Uh, but the Civil Guard was still armed with these all the way up till 2009. So they were, they were eventually phased out uh, by 2009, and they were sold off abroad. Most of them actually went to the U.S. Um, so they went to distributors in the U.S. who, who sold those M1 carbines. Um, you can find them occasionally popping up at gun shows and who knows where. It's kind of hard to identify which ones were Israeli, which kinds weren't. Uh, a good indicator would be graffiti. If you find Hebrew graffiti on an M1 carbine in, in any place, if it's on the stock, or on the gun itself, then you'll probably know that was used by the Civil Guard. Uh, but again, it, it sometimes, you know, there's absolutely no way to know that your gun was an Israeli surplus import. It's sometimes, you know, very, very hard to tell. Um, but, you know, overall, again, this is, uh, this is really an, an excellent, excellent design. I just love it. You know, it's got a little, uh, it's got a little recoil pad here to absorb that really minimal recoil of the 30 caliber cartridge. Um, you know, one of the reasons they chose this weapon as a police gun is, is the cartridge. So I actually have a box here of, of original. This is original Israeli police issue ammo. So this is pretty hard to find. Um, and the, uh, the ammo that they were issuing, you can see it is, um, it is uh, exposed lead in the front. So it's soft point. This is soft point 30 caliber ammo. And uh, this here... This really gives you added stopping power. So this is manufactured by IMI. It's got a little stamp. You probably can't see it in the back. It says IMI 30 carbine. And uh, this really gives you um, extra, extra stopping power. I mean, don't forget the, the 30 caliber cartridge in and of itself is, a, is the equivalent of a 357 Magnum cartridge. That, that's already a pretty hard hitting caliber. And then you're talking about this thing going out of a 16-inch barrel, because this is a 16-inch barrel. So, so we're talking about pretty good velocity on what is already a, a very powerful, hard-hitting round. Um, so when you when you add that to um, you got you know soft nose ammo, this uh, this really is extremely effective um, in terms of stopping power. So this was actually, I believe, the last time this was used in combat was. Um, uh, in a, uh, a firefight with Hezbollah terrorists on the northern border of Israel, with Lebanon. And uh, they were able to eliminate the terrorists. The terrorists were armed with, with AKs, and, uh, and the, the police, um, you know, I'm not sure if they were officers or volunteers uh, who were armed with these, uh, neutralized them and, and took them out using the, uh, you know, the carbine. 
Um, and so again, it's, it's, it's a very effective cartridge for, uh, for in terms of stopping power at relatively close ranges. I mean, I would say up to intermediate range, this is something which is uh, pretty effective. Um, the, the carbine is not a sniper weapon. It is not a very long range weapon. It wasn't really designed for extremely long range shooting, but um, this can be definitely effective I would say up to 150 meters, up to maybe 200 meters, you know, the, before the bullet really starts to drop and, and, and lose velocity. Um, but within that range, this is, is absolutely um, hard hitting, very effective, um, battle tested weapon. And uh, I would be very confident using this as, as a defensive firearm. This is something because of it's so light and small, uh, it can be used by younger shooters, it can be used by a lot of women. Um, and people that you know uh, may not be comfortable carrying something which is really large and uh, and heavy, and because of its uh, its its proportions, it's also convenient for moving within the confines of a building. And and again, with this folding stock, you can you can have that conveniently inside of a vehicle. Um, so this is also a weapon which could be great for home defense. You know, it's it's the carbine round is probably not going to over penetrate in the same way that a 556 five, would. So you could be more confident using this within the confines of, of a building, within, within a, a home. And so um, I feel that this is, this is really an excellent choice and that you know, more American shooters should consider this. You don't necessarily have to look for a carbine that originally comes with this stock. You could actually buy a, um, just any M1 carbine, any mil-spec M1 carbine, and you can order this stock online separately and add it to it, and you're making your weapon very, very tactical. Uh, I think people don't really appreciate what an amazing weapon the M1 carbine is. A lot of people today, um, they see it as really an, an, an antiquated weapon, outdated, um, just because it's, it is a very old design. It, it dates back to World War II. Um, but it is still a very viable platform. You know, the AR is not the end-all and be-all of everything in the gun world. There are other options out there which, uh, even though they may be older designs, they even may be older weapons, I mean this, this, this carbine uh, was made in, uh, in 1943. This is, this is an old weapon, you know, this is a Winchester manufactured in 43. You know, it went through World War II, it, it might have gone through Korea and, and who knows how many other conflicts, um, you know, before it ended up with me. But it still works and it works really well and uh, the same way that it was able to defend American soldiers on the battlefield and uh, Israeli police uh, defending the home front against terrorists, it can work uh, for a civilian to defend himself and his, his home. So um, let's give this a shot. Let's, let's try it out and, and see how this goes. really smooth this is uh, really easy to fire very very nice it doesn't have a lot of recoil it's very controllable you know I, I really love this weapon it's uh, it's just something that uh, just feels great in the hand and it's actually quite accurate you'd be surprised how accurate it is Yeah, this is smooth. This is this is a really smooth, nice gun to shoot. I mean, it's it's just something that feels really good, you know, holding and and the the recoil is is really easy to manage. This is
smooth and hard hitting weapon. You know, you can't go wrong with an M1 carbine. All right, guys, so as you can see, this is a, a really effective weapon. It, it, it shoots great. It is very easy to manipulate, easy to handle. It is very accurate for what it is. Uh, it is a hard hitting caliber. Um, I feel very confident with it. This is something that I feel if I needed to protect myself and my family with, um, I could rely upon it. And it is, it is very light, it is very ergonomic, very easy to handle. And this is something that you could train a young shooter with. This is something that a lot of women would be comfortable with. And uh, it's just a great all around, uh, really light defensive gun. And so if you're in the market for something that you know, could, could check off a lot of boxes on your list of needs. You want something that's good for home defense, something that's that's small and compact and, and can be transported in a vehicle, and something that you could train a lot of members of your family on. Um, I would recommend this. The M1 Carbine it has been in service in many, many countries for uh, about 80 years now, and it, it's still going strong. There's still a lot of countries that are using it. Um, it's been very effective. You know, it won World War II and, and fought in Korea and Vietnam, and um, and it, it's still going strong today. So consider an M1 carbine. And if you already have an M1 carbine, I would definitely consider upgrading to this uh, Choat uh, machine and tool stock. Um, especially if you have you know an old, dinged up wooden stock. Um, the original ones are very hard to find replacements for. If you have an original World War II stock, or you know, maybe you want to do a lot of intense training with it, and you don't want to damage it, this could be a, uh, a great choice. All in all, a really great choice. Um, for, for all of those purposes. And so, um, so you know, it, 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 it was effective in the Mishmar Zwachi, it was effective in the Israeli police for, for many years. And uh, it's unfortunate they decided to phase it out. I, I, I do get why, it is, it is getting old, but um, for an American civilian, this can still be an excellent choice and a very viable platform. Um, don't think that because the weapon is World War II vintage that it is automatically uh, useless or outdated or ineffective. So um, I hope you liked this video. Make sure to tune in next time. Uh, make sure to give us a like and subscribe and um, we'll see you next time.